what it all comes down to, what the entire purpose of this series is, is basically our ability to work better and work more effectively with kids. And whenever anybody comes to a workshop like this, in somewhere in the beginning, middle, or end of the workshop, the speaker says, you've got to work on the child's self-esteem. How do you do that? How do you build the child's self-esteem? Well, I've come up with an analogy that I think works. In order to build a child's self-esteem and work on a child's self-esteem, I would ask you to think of self-esteem as being poker chips. Self-esteem is basically poker chips. If you've got a good self-esteem, a strong self-esteem, you've got a lot of poker chips. And if you've got a poor self-esteem, a low self-esteem, you don't have many poker chips. Simple as that. Let's talk about two children who go to the school that your child goes to. Goes to these two children go to every school in the country. One child is named Joe Cool. Joe Cool has tons and tons and tons of poker chips. How did he get all those poker chips? By good things happening to him. When good things happen to you, you get poker chips. Captain of the football team, he has 10,000 poker chips. Voted king of the homecoming dance, he has 15,000 poker chips. Get your picture in a paper for, uh, for scoring the winning touchdown, he has 12,000 poker chips. This kid's got millions and millions of poker chips. He's had, a, he's had a charmed life, God bless him. He feels great about himself and he should. Now you also lose poker chips when bad things happen to you. You go to the prom, with, Joe Cool goes to the prom with the best looking girl on campus, 20,000 poker chips. Prom night comes, he's got a pimple on the end of his nose. <laughs> he loses 3,000 poker chips, but he still has a net game, a gain of 17,000 poker chips. He's still 17,000 poker chips ahead. And this kid goes to school every day with his baskets and bags full of poker chips. And sitting next to him is Larry the learning disabled kid. Larry the learning disabled kid has poker chips like this. This is it. This is all he's ever gotten. Never been voted captain of anything. Didn't go to the prom. Never been on a team. Never got on 100 in a test. Didn't blow the top off his SATs. Didn't even take his SATs. He's got a stack of poker chips like this. And now with the inclusion movement, we make those two kids go to school together and compete against each other in the games of school. I would submit to you that that's not fair. I would submit that that's not fair. Anybody play poker here? Do we have any poker players here? Uh, sir, would you, Chris, would you, could you join me up here? Would you mind? <clears throat> Suppose, Chris, I were to say, ask you if you wanted to play poker. And I said, Chris, here's basically the deal. You're going to have this many poker chips. Okay, I'm going to have there you go. I'm going to have all the poker chips in the Western world. I have basically 10 million poker chips back there. I'm going to play poker against you. What would be your first response? Would you want to play? I don't think so. Okay, his first response would be, I don't want to play. What do we think the learning disabled kid is saying to us when he says, I don't want to go to school today, ma? Don't make me go. I got one of those stomach aches again, ma. Don't make me go. Please don't make me go to school today. What's he saying to you? He's saying, I don't have enough chips to get in the game. I don't have enough chips. Don't make me play this game. But we say to him, you've got to play. Laws, the law says you've got to play. You've got to go to school. So I say to you, Chris, you've got to play poker with me. You're going to have that many chips, and I have bundles and bundles of chips back there. How would you play, Chris? Would you play conservatively, or would you play recklessly? Uh, probably recklessly. Probably recklessly. He would be the one, he would be one of those who would say, I'll bet the whole thing. I don't care. That's what the learning disabled kid when he says that's what the learning disabled kid says when he says, "Sure, I can walk along the edge of that building. Sure, I can try dope. Sure, I can join a I can join a group uh, a gang. Sure, I can do that." In other words, I'm just going to be I'm just going to be spontaneous and do anything. I'm just going to bet the whole thing. I don't care. I don't care. I'll just bet the whole thing. Any of you would any of you play um, conservatively? Yeah, some people are saying, I play conservatively. I just bet one chip at a time. That's what the kid with a learning disability is saying to you when he says, no, I don't want to ask anybody to the dance. Don't ask me to, Ma. I don't want to put anything in the science fair. I don't want to go to summer school. I'm only going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take the chips that I've got, and I'm going to hold on tight to those, and I'm not going to let these go. And in school, we make these two kids play the game of school against each other, and I would submit to you that that's not fair. So in class, the first day, is, we're in class one day, and the teacher says, who was the president of the United States during the Civil War? And Joe Cool sitting there and he's saying, I think it was Calvin Coolidge, but I'm not sure. Well, what the heck, I've got 10 million poker chips. If I get this answer wrong, it's only going to cost me five. Uh, was it Calvin Coolidge? The teacher says, no. Larry, the learning disabled kid, is sitting there and he's looking at this little stack of poker chips. He's got 25 poker chips to his name. And he's thinking, I think the answer is Abraham Lincoln. I think the answer is Abraham Lincoln, but I just don't dare answer. I don't dare respond because I have another game I've got to play at lunch. 
You see, yesterday when I went to lunch, I gave the lunch lady, the one with the hairnet and the tattoo, I gave the lunch lady, I gave the lunch lady a $20 bill and she only gave me change for a 10. And my father said, don't you come back without that extra $10. You go to that lady and you tell her she gave you the wrong change, and he's thinking, that's going to take me 25 chips. It's going to take 25 chips for me to go and ask that lady for my money back. So I don't dare play in this game, because if I lose the chips, I won't have enough to play in the game I've got to play at lunch. And the teacher says, the right answer is Abraham Lincoln. And Larry goes, oh, I should have done it. I should have done it. The reality is that the self-esteem of our kids, the problem with the self-esteem of our kids, is they just don't have enough poker chips. The solution is to give them poker chips. How do you give kids poker chips? How do you build their self-esteem? One is you find, if you're a parent or you're a teacher, you find the island, what, what Bob Brooks calls the island of competence. You find the one thing that that child can do well and you make a big deal out of that. You celebrate that. You make that very important. If you're a mom and the only thing your child knows how to do is use a Phillips head screwdriver, every Thursday before he gets off the bus, you loosen every bloody screw in the house. <laughs> And when he gets off the bus, you give him the screwdriver and you say, go to it, pal, because nobody does it like you. <laughs> you got to be a talent scout. You got to find things he does well. You got to find, because every time you praise a child, every time you say, that was a good job, you're giving him poker chips. Parenting is pretty simple. Being a teacher is pretty simple. It all comes down to this. Your job is to make sure that every child you deal with has more poker chips when he goes to bed that night than he or she had when they got up in the morning. That's it. It's that simple. And how do you make sure they have poker chips? You give as many poker chips as possible. Secondly, you take away only as many poker chips as necessary. Please listen to me, dads, because we dads are real good at this. Let's say that Chris is my son, and Chris is sitting in class, sitting at the dinner table. You want to cup your hands like that for me, Chris? Chris is sitting at the dinner table, and he's got that many poker chips. He's got that many chips. And we're sitting at the dinner table, and, and uh, Chris spills his milk. And I say, you know, Chris, sometimes you make me sick. You know, do you get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and say, how can I spoil Dad's day? Is that what your problem is? You're the only one in the family who does this. Sometimes I even wonder why we have you in this family. Go to your room. And he goes up to his room. And the rest of the family's sitting there, oh boy, oh boy. And I sit there and I think, oh boy, that was pretty rough. I was pretty rough on old Chris. That's pretty tough on Chris. I wasn't really mad at Chris. I was mad at my secretary. So I should go apologize to him. So I go up and I sit in the edge of Chris's bed. And I stroke his hair and I say, gee, Chris, I'm sorry, pal. I shouldn't have yelled at you that way. I shouldn't have yelled at you that way. That was wrong. That won't happen again. Sorry, Dad. Sorry, Dad. Yelling at him in front of the family, telling him you wish he wasn't in the family, tell, asking him if he plans how to spoil your day, telling him you're basically sick of seeing him when you come home from work. You took away 50, 60,000 poker chips from him. Sit in the edge of his bed, stroke his hair, tell him you love him. 5,000 poker chips at the most you're still 55,000 55, poker chips behind the eight ball. You can't do that with our kids. You can't take away those massive number of poker chips without realizing that you're making your job as a parent much tougher. And lastly, you've got to give as many as you can, take away only what's necessary, and lastly, you've got to be willing to go to the mat with people who take poker chips away from your child and not give any back. Teachers take away chips, bus drivers take away chips, principals take away chips, but most of us also give chips back. And if you take poker chips away from a kid, but then give some back, that's OK. There's a lot of people in your child's life who play that role. But the bottom line is, if there's someone in your child's life who is taking poker chips away and not giving any back, they're making your life much tougher. When are we going to deal with this? That's what advocacy means. Standing up for someone who can't stand up for themselves. If you're a teacher or a parent, you've got to be willing to go to the mat with people who take chips away from your kid and not give any back. You're a mom, you get up in the morning, you make him French toast. Oh man, 20,000 chips. <laughs> you lay out his favorite clothes, a Beavis and Butthead t-shirt that he loves and you hate, 15,000 chips. You put his books at the door, ready for him to go out the door, 10,000 chips. You warm up the maple syrup, oh my God. <laughs> you warm up the maple syrup, another 5,000 chips. You have a nice breakfast with him, you give him a big kiss, and you send him out the door with a great big hug and kiss and 50,000 brand new poker chips. And he steps on the school bus, and the school bus driver says, well, here's the retard. You might as well stay at home. You might as well stay in bed, ma. You might as well have stayed in bed, because that one comment took 60,000 chips away from your son. 60,000 chips away like this. You might as well have stayed in bed, because all the chips that you gave to your child were just taken away. 
Being a parent, being a teacher is not all that complicated. It's all a matter of poker chips. None of us want to think about what happens to a child at 18 to 19 years old that doesn't have enough poker chips to play the games of life. You know how many poker chips it takes to ask for your first job? You know how many poker chips it takes to ask someone to marry you? Thousands and thousands of poker chips. One of the problems that, one of the reasons that many adults with learning disabilities have problems, they just don't have enough poker chips to get into the games of adult life. And when you don't have enough poker chips, suddenly suicide begins to make sense, drug abuse begins to make sense, gangs begin to make sense. Our job is as simple as this, to make sure that every child who crosses our paths as a parent or a teacher, as a parent or a teacher, every child that crosses our paths has more poker chips when he goes to bed that night than when he gets up in the morning. It's that simple. And hopefully this has helped. Thank you very much.